numbers all the time, Kelly. I mean, this is not like we just woke up this morning and said, oh, maybe we should do this. I mean, we have been intimate with the numbers of this county since we took office. And, you know, yes, intimate. And we're kind of hoping that in the next couple of meetings, because of this, maybe people will people come, come out. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My words, we're hoping we're going to Marlboro. Yeah. I think that's we have Kent next week. We have Marlboro, uh, I think that's the last meeting. Uh, I think there's yeah. maybe three. Canton Township, Canton Township. Canton Township. Yeah. yeah, we have the big ones to go yet. But you know what? Let's get them out. And I, you know, we just didn't want to wait till the last minute. Uh, uh, are you yeah. concerned that there's, uh, uh, and I, I picked this up during the meeting, where this is just going to be a discussion and not a debate. Are you concerned that you'll get people come that uh, want to challenge you on this? Well, and they can, oh, oh, Mark, people can always challenge us. That's what we're here for. But, again, just through my years of being with the county, I was always taught, I'm saying it's right, I was always taught that the hearings are to hear what constituents have to right. say, not to engage in a debate. But that is why they are called hearings. And I just want to know how far, because once you start in a dial, in a debate, then what eventually happens is they go, and if we have to be there 12 hours, then we'll bring lunch in and we'll eat lunch there, I guess. I'm, whatever. That's why we're starting at one but, but, so, so. But, but my point is, is that, you know, everybody's going to find something that they want to nitpick on. But we have to look at the big picture right. of this right. county right. and where we are going with our quality of life, our safety, and our welfare. And so I, I just, I wanted a clarification because you, there's going to be people that are going to come in. If they ask a direct question, I guess we should answer well, When they come to these meetings and uh, they see that really what the reality is of the numbers, then I think they understand. But right now there's still some mistrust in government in Washington and in, in the state and, and in the county because of what happened in Treasury's office. We've got to overcome that. And now we're going to say that we want... We want your help. We want a tax, and we got to prove to them that you know, this is vital. Right. So, so what's changed um, in what was it January, February when you made the decision not to put the, the tax on in January when you made the decision not to put the tax on the May ballot? There was several different factors. You know, you just coming in, you, you haven't been on board that that long, but there's also that distrust factor and other factors. So what's changed between January to now to make you want to at least attempt the public hearings and possibly put it on the ballot? Has that distrust eased well, a little bit? I, I, I think we, we've, we've, uh, we've made cuts in all of the departments. Um, we've had furlough days here. Uh, I think we've, we've met with all the county officials. Uh, we've laid out what, uh, what we're up against financially. Uh, and I think that we've realized that you know, now's the time to do it because we don't have a choice. Uh, you know, hopefully we gain some confidence in the people. I mean, uh, we're hearing on the outside that people... Uh, do believe in what the commissioners are doing. Uh, I, I think have confidence in what they're doing. Uh, by getting out into the communities, it's been the first time it's ever happened. When you get three commissioners, a common police judge uh, going out, the county treasurer, the county auditor going to a meeting, I think people are more apt to believe, hey, these people are really trying to do their job. I think that's the difference in my mind. And the difference for me has been that on the first five days, because we would have had to make the decision, I think, on January 5th, and I had, I had only been there five days. I didn't know the official carryover. I didn't have the results of the Citizen Review Council. I didn't have the local government funds cuts. And for me, I have now a better, I had to, I had to gear up again. I, I needed to, to get my gears going again about county government and delving into things. And the road show has also proven to me that this is an open, transparent board that is willing to go out into the community and answer questions and to find out what's, what are the concerns. And, you know, I, I like that statement you just made. <coughs> Excuse me. But doesn't that pretty much box you in in terms of having a back and forth uh, between yourselves and citizens at these two public hearings? Oh, Martin, let me be clear. I'm never afraid to answer a question. 
and I'm not afraid to, I'm a, I, if somebody wants to come and beat me up and throw a tomato at me, they, that's what they can do. I just wanted to clarify in my mind because I remember a former board of commissioners that felt, and this is probably before any of your time here, that they felt that it was, they, they just would not answer a question at, a, at, at the sales tax hearings. Their mission was to hear what everybody had to say and not engage in any dialogue. Just wanted to know if it was a law or not. Oh, I see. I, that's okay. All I'm, that's all. I yeah, did. because uh, you demonstrated that at Jackson, in fact. What? That I'm not afraid to answer. Right. Questions? You remember I'm not that? To take people on? No, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, right. Right. From my perspective, and adding to what, what they said, I, I think just living, living with the budget cuts that we made for five months you know, demonstrates you know, how how difficult it is presently, and having the state budget numbers. You which are, are starting to shape up, having our own budgetary numbers firmed up for the for the carryover and into the end of this year, and seeing these numbers that we've again recently developed, and we've actually developed these numbers since you know you attended the Jackson community meeting. Right. We've been using this set of slides probably for the last approximate two week period of time. So again, these numbers have helped me firm this up. Uh, seeing what, what's going to occur in 2012, seeing what has occurred, you know at the jail and in the different offices that we deal with, the prosperous office, the courts and so forth. But we are in a parallel, very, very difficult condition now. 2012 will be perilous, if not calamitous, if, if we don't pass this. I mean, when I ran for this office, I knew that there were problems. That's one of the reasons why I ran, because I believe I bring the experience to the table along with my colleagues to help solve the problems. I want to be a problem sol solver. I love this county, and I do not want to see us go in the hole any deeper. And I'm troubled by what I see here in Stark County, and that for some reason we have failed to either educate citizens or make them aware. You know, I, I keep going back to the safety and welfare and quality of life. It's where we live. It's the power of us. And the one thing that is really my attention, and, and I emphasize this every week, and that is when you look at the chart of sales tax, you know, in the state of Ohio, there are 88 counties. We've long discussed the fact that we're the seventh largest and we're the only one with a quarter percent. We will be the only one with no percent. But what I didn't know and what I do know now is that there are 46 counties in the state of Ohio with 1.5 percent in sales tax. Six times what we have, an infinite amount more than what we will have when we have nothing. There are another total of uh, 35, another 35 counties that have 1% or more. So there are 81 counties in the state of Ohio out of 88 that have 1% or greater sales tax. And we, we'll, we'll Our county that. has a quarter percent. Do you see that? It's, it's extraordinary. Yeah, it's, it's, hmm. yeah. um, so is this, are commissioners definitely going to put a sales tax on the November ballot? Is this... I mean, well, that issue still has to be voted upon by water. the commissioners and, and yeah. we need to I mean, go to the statutory hearings. Okay. Is there anything at the hearings that may change your mind and say that the board would not put it on in November? I, I, can't I don't know unless future, somebody's you know, purple I mean, spot yeah. dust all over us with money. <laughs> Tom, you were, you so, were. I didn't know if I could word it that you know the commissioner's plan to put it on the ballot. I, I and are reporting these hearings to hear from the public, or if it's still up in the air that you have not made your decision, although it sounds like you're leaning that way. Well, I, I, I don't think I've made my decision. I think we have to have, uh, we have, to have these hearings and then decide. I think it's only fair. I, I, I have my, made my decision whether we would if we put a half percent on, whether we go a quarter percent for. Judicial for the jail and the other quarter percent general, or maybe we'll go, I don't know. Yeah, but, say, but, but, I, but I want to. But, but when you ran, sure. Tom, you were pretty, pretty much, pretty candid that you were, you were going to be uh, after you had got a handle on things, uh, you were going to be in favor of some kind of a sales tax, right? Yes. And, and now, and again, you ask whether anything can transpire between now and the end of the hearings. From my perspective, there's nothing foreseeable that can transpire that will change the, our economic future, which is, again, extremely difficult, if not, you know, calamitous, if, if nothing is put on. And so these hearings may help you decide whether or not to seek some part of the sales tax for general revenue operations and some part towards the criminal side and those kind of you know, how long to go for those kind of questions are still out there. Yeah, yeah. I think definitely. Yeah, that, that's yeah, those are, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah.
What if, what if somebody comes in, or a group of people comes in and say, you know, we'll go for a quarter, but we can't support a half? Are, are you open to that kind of... Uh, I, I, think that, oh, I'm sorry. I think if we could show them what a quarter percent would do, uh, I think they would realize that a quarter percent is not going to do anything for us, and uh, it's going to make us some worse off than we are right now. So I think if we could... If we had a group of citizens and say we would only support a quarter percent, I think if we could educate them on this is what a quarter percent will do for the county finances, I think they would realize that's not enough. Every day, every day of the week, and we've been doing that for now for five months and 31 days, we have 200 more individuals who a year ago today you know, were in jail who aren't in jail anymore. And if you start adding that up, by the way, by the time, uh, if you multiply that out 200 times 365 days, you, you have about... I think it's like 70,000 know, jail days or prison days, by the way, which, you know, you have the people on the street that, that, that are, 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 are or should be in prison, you know, or, or in jail, you know, are not in jail. Even with the half percent, if it gets passed in November, when would the jail be able to reopen to full? Yeah, I can't. Mm -hmm. It would be, be based right? upon that. Mm -hmm. That'd be based upon us making other decisions associated with it also. Right. That's just too far. Well, with the half percent. It requires a 5.3%. Is your show tonight going to deal with the half percent scenario? It, it'll show all, yes. all sure. the quarter yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, it'll show no sales tax. It'll show. Okay. And, I, I um, did see those numbers. Uh, uh, the, the half percent, if, if, you, if you held the justice system to next year to what it is this year, and it's already cut this year, as you know, you have to cut in our current projections, and I realize they're projections, about 5.3% from the other departments, commissioners, auditor, treasurer, recorder, etc. That's with the half percent passing. With the half percent, we're still not capable of addressing easily without making some other very difficult decisions. Public safety is our foremost concern, but there are other concerns when we get to Perry Township, you're going to hear those concerns because we already anticipate that. Significant drainage issues that have gone, you know, unaddressed in this county because there's no funding for it. Significant, you know, permanent capital improvement issues for us. And significant economic development uh, funding issues. And again, we're still talking about that the half a percent, even when we receive it all in 2013, just brings us back to 2010.